Hi everyone. So this is my last lecture to you for the 2020 spring semester for illustration survey. And yeah, this didn't go the way any of us had planned, did it? Not at all. Oh, by the way, I'm in that lounge space in my studio building with uh, this n totally non-working fireplace here and nobody around. The only thing that's really functional is a coffee maker. So just a couple final words from me to you uh, at the end of this very different semester, the most different one that I've ever experienced in all of my teaching and certainly in your educational careers. So not quite sure how to comment on that. Uh, I, it's only from my perspective that I can say that this is obviously not what anybody intended, whether it was the school or me or the class or anything, obviously. I think the most important thing right now is to get what we can with what we got. And the primary importance, of course, being that your health and your families and your friends and loved ones are all safe and healthy. And I'm going to do the same on my part to make sure that that continues to happen. And as far as teaching is concerned, uh, I'll do what I can with, with what I've got. And this is basically what I had at my disposal. Uh, there was only so much I could do, and there was only so much that I thought was kind of necessary for your engagement with this thing in this form. So I just want to express my sincere thanks. Thank you for following along with me on this and for the most part, like the 90% the of you, let's say, that were very diligent in responding to the discussion board and getting into the materials. And a lot of you were really engaged with this stuff. It did kind of give me a little bit of more leeway breaking out of the syllabus a tiny bit here and there just to make sure that you were going to have some fun with it, that it wasn't going to be super dry and super academic. Not that not, not that my syllabus was designed to be dry and academic, but in different circumstances, I think it gets received differently. So with this remote sort of distance between us, I felt it was kind of necessary to come up with a little bit of a different solution where you felt a little more compelled to actively participate and, and enjoy it simultaneously as opposed to having it be a chore. And what's funny about that is that I think I learned something along the way uh, in terms of how to present things or not how I present things per se, and certainly not through you know just video content, but what the content is and how you can kind of get similar messages across without being uh, overtly and overly academic about it. Uh, it can be fun. I do try and make it fun. I mean, you guys know me. I do my best to try and make it engaging in the classroom. I guess when I was removed from a situation where I was really comfortable um, you know, giving you information and having a, a parley back and forth uh, in a discussion in real time and not having that at my disposal at, at, at as part of the curriculum itself, because our discussions become part of the curriculum. Your peers' opinions and insights and criticisms all come into play. So we don't really have that. And I certainly didn't want to opt for the synchronous learning thing where we all did a Zoom whatever, and it's like, that's just, I don't know. To me, that seemed like chaos and it seemed like uh, much ado about very little uh, we could have had it, and it could have been fun, but would we have actually gained anything out of it? And after a while, it would have been a chore for you to just sit there and meet and ask yourself, are we going to get anything from this? So I wanted it to be, you know, my court than your court, like a game of tennis, let's say. Uh, but I wanted it to be a fun game as opposed to, you know, lots of money and trophies on the line. Um, and so... I did a couple more, you know, fun kind of things with like the the Pixar shorts and stuff, 
which had some crossover with visual narratives in a sense, although I asked them different questions and prompts about looking at those films. But if you're interested, by the way, I'm going to plug myself. Why not? <laughs> if you're interested in taking the visual narratives course after this, I'm not sure if it's going to be run in the fall of 2020 or in the spring of 2021 or, you know, what's even going on with schools in general as far as opening and what's being offered online or what's being offered in real time. I don't know. But if you're just interested in the class, let's just say. Some of the stuff that you were doing is very parallel with that. In that particular case, it was almost the same, but a little bit different because I, I, I mixed it up for the sake of that class. But that kind of uh, engagement with uh, popular culture items and, uh, and, and you know, having them be very contemporary and trying to bring them into a, a contemporary study um, without it being dry is something that that class is all about. And um, Abby M. actually knows because uh, they were taking both classes simultaneously. So if you really want to ask somebody who's been on the ground with both of those things, and I very much appreciate, Abby, that you, you put up with me for, for so much of this content. Um, but that's a person to ask if you want to know. Um, so I want to say a couple words about uh, Beauty is Embarrassing. Because uh, one of the things I don't think I mentioned in the previous lecture is that uh, I had a chance to Skype with Wayne White when uh, Beauty is Embarrassing kind of debuted in the academic circuit. Uh, I mean, it debuted at a couple of film festivals or whatever, but then it was released to schools because you can kind of see how that is sort of like his sort of thing. He's, he's kind of really into the art education at... Um, a fun level. Um, so art schools got a hold of uh, the film and were screening it. It was screened here in Portland at the State Theater. Jeez, I can't remember when, but I was still a professor at, at Maine College of Art. And um, it was about noontime, and he came on at Skype around then, which meant that it was 9 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, I remember his... So I was sort of leading a discussion for the students with him, you know, ask, prompting them to ask him questions. And he was super, you can imagine, he was super gracious about it. He was really nice. Of course, very engaging. He's got as much of a big personality uh, in real time as it seemed in the film. But what was interesting is that behind him, um, the his children who were, I think, still in high school at the time, it seemed like that, they were leaving for school and like he's sitting there and they're going by in the back are going by dad and he's just like don't forget your lunch it was so real and it fits so well with the film that you know it, it just made me really believe in this guy as a, an artist but actually just a, a true human being i mean he's 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 got his faults and he he talks about that um and even some of you spoke to some of those things in the in the discussion, but uh, that's kind of like who we are. Um, he's not a rock star. Some people might think he is, but uh, I don't think he totally thinks he is. I mean, he makes fun of it, and I think he likes it because it provides him with a certain level of comfort so that he can support his family and, and continue to do his art. But as far as like the fame part of it, I think he, he thinks it's a little bit silly, but in a fun way. So, I mean, I guess that kind of works for him. So a lot of you in the discussion um, mentioned some great things. Uh, some of the stuff about that I asked about Mimi Pond, his wife, his partner, um, kind of taking that, that sacrifice that it seems that so many moms take in, in putting their career on the back burner in order to support the family from the interior. Uh, and yeah, there is a certain amount of sadness behind that. Um, I think there's also a certain amount of great honor behind it because it, I don't feel like she was forced into that situation. I think she chose to, and yes, it could, it's arguable that that's sort of like a patriarchal construct that she felt compelled to make that choice. Um, 
I don't actually think that that's the argument really because she herself being an artist kind of recognized something in Wayne White that it was worthwhile for her to do that and she did eventually end up getting back into what she's been longing to do for for all those years so I think it turned out okay uh, for everybody in the end um, I did feel that the first time I watched the movie, I was just like, dang, you know, Amy Pond, and somebody pointed this out, this is like, she wrote the, the first Simpsons episodes, like, what would her career have been like had she not, you know, had children, had she not, you know, sat back and supported Wayne instead of doing her own thing, and, you know, who knows, but then, you know, Wayne White's career wouldn't be there, so, you know, there's that to think about, so I think that maybe, you know, just think that that's just the way things suss out. And I don't think we can look back on that past and say that there's really any regret. doesn't seem like they have too many regrets, so I guess we shouldn't either in that case. An interesting point was made about Wayne White's success in the sense that, you know, he's a middle-aged white dude like, like me <laughs> and the uh, advantages that, that come with that. And that's something that shouldn't necessarily be discounted completely because that is true there are doors that are easily opened by that per kind of person that others could never walk through uh unfortunately and that's that's a shame and that's something that's regrettable but certainly no fault of his per se and actually for him I think when you do, when you take that out of the picture, he's not obviously not your typical artist. He's not your typical person, really, being the hillbilly that he was, and I guess still is. He still embraces that part of himself. Um, you know, he, he broke into a couple of different, uh, numerous different aspects of the art world, commercial, studio. And, and fine art, you know, well, and Hollywood, too, uh, all of those things, still kind of maintaining his own personal integrity about his being a hick, which is kind of wild. Um, and I don't have to actually think that has anything to do necessarily with his color or masculinity. Um, it's because there is certainly a prejudice towards uh, stupid backwater people that's just as heavy as anything else um, and uh, and I say that you know jokingly not that I believe that everybody from backwater is stupid but uh, um, he broke a, a number of different molds and even if you know he you know like his father for instance who was not you know a, a traditionally you know educated man past high school but it had a certain degree of, you know, quote unquote, fame in his own hometown, being a star athlete and popular and ever whatever. Had no desire to to leave, uh, as well as his friend uh, Mike Quinn uh, had no desire to leave either. So he ended up you know, teaching art at, uh, at a local high school, um, which is a great vocation, but it's it's the same and different, I suppose. And I think. Uh, Wayne White's hunger to sort of break out of that just to see how far it could take him not necessarily successfully but just with his art like what could I do with my art that I can't do here anymore He's, he kind of felt the limitations of it and just needed a totally different venue in which to exercise his craft um, and his desires to just create and just be weird and wacky and unpredictable. And it worked. And I think that's the, the, the lesson that we can all take from it. And I think a lot of you did take, all of you who responded took that inspiration from it and found that um, his trajectory was one that you could kind of get on board with where he wasn't dialing in to just wearing one kind of artistic hat and just saying like I'm gonna be that and that's it none of you should actually be thinking that way I mean you could definitely stand to concentrate in something and get really good at what it is you like to excel at but 
at the same time don't make it just that because the art world as you can see is so multifarious in terms of its uh, um, different venues, different modes, different uh, oh I can't think of the word right now, I'm sorry um, but just different ways of expression to, oh I got it, a different niches, I don't know why I couldn't remember that word the different niches of fans of those things, the different viewers who are out there looking for a particular thing and you can fulfill a lot of different ones at the same time. You don't have to just look at one thing and go, yeah, like those are my people. I'm just going to appeal to them. Um, that's not going to satisfy you for too long. You know, it might, it might be an incredible success, let's say financially, where that interaction between you and that particular fandom is going to help you make a living. But as far as helping you advance your art in any way, you know, that that can be very limiting. So I think the lesson from him be, just being so expansive with what he did and, and kind of fearless, uh, and maybe fearless in the sense that he just didn't care and he would just, you know, say, fuck you, which he says a lot in the movie to anybody that would be critical of it and just did it anyway. And it worked out because he... He, was, he wasn't sincere necessarily about the fuck yous. He was more s serious about and sincere about just doing his work without the interference of feeling like he needed to be accepted for what he was doing and that he needed to be super successful with it. And he really just wanted to, to make a living. You can kind of see the pressures that he put upon himself in order to um, support his family because... Mimi was taking a, a back seat with her career to take care of their kids. He said, okay, well, if she's going to do that, then I have to double down on my end and you know, make it work really, really well. And, he, you know, he burnt himself out at one point doing that. And then he kind of took stock of where he was and, and returns in a completely different way. But it was still him, you know, it was still his work, his fine art stuff. And I've seen numerous shows of his. The last one I saw, I think, was in 2016, 2017, at uh, David's Warner in uh, Chelsea in Manhattan. And uh, I was with my daughter, who was your age, so at the time she was younger. Um, but uh, her second year, first year in college? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she was at Pace University in New York at the time. So I met her there, and she was just, she had never heard of him before, and I really didn't give her much of an introduction, but I could just tell by the joy on her face walking around his weird, like, mobile puppet things and, and the, the, the landscape and type paintings with the obscene phrases in them or ridiculous phrases in them, and I could just tell by the look on her face. I was like, yeah, Wayne White still got it. He's still got it going on because he just makes people smile, and um, and 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 he's skillful about it too. So I'm glad you got the opportunity to to see the film. Uh, I do show it to all my classes at some point or another because I think it's an important film for young artists to be inspired by because of his attitude. It, it, you know, it's not a traditional art attitude. Certainly not academic. And it's not really focused on skill per se, although he did, did have skill, but you could kind of see that it was a, always a, a work in progress. Remember the first, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the puppet, the one with the giant head uh, in Pee-wee's Playhouse uh, that he voiced. Uh, you know, he made that puppet completely wrong because his head was too heavy and it kept turning around. Um, so he was really learning on the fly, but he wasn't afraid to do it because he felt like it was always an opportunity to create something. And you should always feel that way about everything that you encounter. Um, that's what being an artist really is, is, looking for the opportunity to turn something into a moment where you can actually make it into your own creation. Doesn't necessarily even have to be a physical product. It could just be like how you live. Right? It's like, how you, how do I support myself as, as an artist if my art isn't actually uh, making enough money for me to do that? Well, then you obviously have to do something else for a little while, but maybe make that something 
that's not so diametrically opposed to who you are or what you do as an artist, but maybe symbiotic to that. Uh, and that's where creative and uh, critical thinking comes into play. So if you think like an artist, you can be an artist in almost any venue that you find yourself in. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So that's, uh, that's my um, bit of commentary on that film. And uh, I hope that's an inspiration that you can continue to take with you, um, not just for the rest of the year, but uh, forever. Um, and feel free to log in and watch that uh, on my account anytime you want. I'm actually I'm glad that worked, by the way. I wasn't sure. I did do that beta test at home, but it looks like everyone was able to do it. And I don't see that site disappearing anytime soon. So if you want to watch it again, please feel free to do so. Um, so... Some final words to you, and uh, one final little ask from me um, is that I want you to. In the dis I'm going to put up a, one more discussion forum, and I want you to just write me a reflection on the semester. Now, I say this, and I don't necessarily. I'm not really looking for uh, a page of venting about like how shitty this whole situation is because I think we all know that but like I said at the beginning we're all kind of trying to do what we can with what we've got and I, I'd rather it be something more along the lines of you know what what was your favorite thing uh, what's your what's your takeaway uh, you know what moving forward um, you know what are some of the things that have stuck with you with all the ground that we've covered. We have covered quite a lot of ground. Um, and, uh, yeah, if there's anything with regard to uh, something that you want to say to, to, to me personally, um, that's totally fine. Uh, I, I'd like to, to hear that. Uh, you're probably going to get similar things asked of you when uh, you're asked to do the student evaluations, but those are terribly impersonal I know so this is something that I'd like to be more personal and about this particular class so yeah so there'll be one more bit of discussion um, and I just want to reassure everyone that I do have all of the requests for uh, the letter grades versus pass fail so those of you who requested letter grades you will receive a letter grade I will have the uh, option to do that when it comes time for grading, which I, I'm not exactly sure when that's happening, but pretty soon, next couple weeks. If anybody is uh, behind in anything, uh, you know, please know that you do have a little bit of time uh, to catch up and, and send me some assignments that uh, you may not have been able to do due to whatever circumstances. Um, a couple of people have asked me about that and and what makes me happy is that it seems like they wanted to do them you know want, it's not just for the sake of the grade because you know if it's pass fail and you've done the majority of the work well what's going to happen um you know you're, you're probably going to pass but i think some people felt like they wanted to do it because they were interested and i think that's great that that does make me happy that makes me feel like i'm doing something right uh, with the curriculum that I've chosen to lay out there for you. So I appreciate that. And again, I appreciate uh, all your comments, uh, all your uh, efforts in the discussion. There are some really sincere and wonderful things in there. Uh, I go When I go in and read it, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of touched by a lot of the insight and a lot of your uh, very personal connections to some of the material, some of the discoveries that you make, some of the rediscoveries that you make. I mean, as a, as a teacher, as a professor, that, it, you know, really brings a lot of joy to my heart. And I know that sounds terribly uh, hyperbolic, but it's true. It's kind of like, why, would I, why else would I be doing this? Um, it ain't for the money. <laughs> it's that being what it is, it really is because... Uh, I, I just want to pass along the things that I know to you and have it be useful. That's basically it. Um, and 
you know, if it's not, then it's not. But if it is, if there's only one thing that is in the entire semester, then I think it's worthwhile for both of us because you got something out of it. Then I hope you got something out of it. I really do. And uh, I hope you're all safe and well. I hope your families are all safe and well, your loved ones. I wish us all a lot of hope for the future. We're all going to get through this. We're all going to be okay. I believe that. It's just a matter of patience. That might be the hardest thing, is to know when we're going to be okay. Um, but that's sort of up to us collectively, not up to any individuals, I don't think. So do what you can to, to stay safe and happy in doing so. And, and keep making stuff. That's always a great way to pass the time, isn't it? Just make stuff. Not for the sake of like, oh, I've got all this extra time on my hands, I should be making stuff. It's not a matter of should be. If you took anything from uh, Beauty is Embarrassing, it's not about you know, setting a bar for your creativity and your productivity. It's setting the bar at a place where I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I, 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 I should probably do that because I enjoy it. That's it. There's no better rubric than that. Okay, everybody, uh, have a good rest of the semester uh, online, I guess. I really, really hope I see you on campus in the fall, and I hope you all have a great summer and stay safe, and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Bye for now.